It is safest to grasp the concept of postmodernism as an attempt to think the present historically in an age that has forgotten how to think historically in the first place. Frederick Jameson Welcome to the Left Library, where we simplify political economy and philosophy. Today, we're exploring Frederick Jameson's influential work, Postmodernism, or The Cultural Logic of Late Capitalism. Frederick Jameson is a prominent Marxist cultural critic and theorist. In Postmodernism, or The Cultural Logic of Late Capitalism, Jameson analyzes how cultural forms reflect and reinforce the economic and social conditions of late capitalism. Jameson begins by defining postmodernism as a cultural logic that emerged in the late 20th century, characterized by the breakdown of traditional boundaries between high and low culture, a focus on surface aesthetics, and a pervasive sense of pastiche and fragmentation. Jameson argues that in the postmodern era, everything is reduced to a series of images and spectacles, devoid of any deeper meaning or substance. This reflects the postmodern shift from production to consumption, where the focus is on creating desires and needs through advertising and media, turning consumption itself into a form of identity and social status. The emphasis on image and spectacle serves to distract people from engaging critically with the underlying socio-economic structures and injustices that perpetuate inequality and exploitation. He writes, the cultural products of late capitalism are like commodities in the truest sense, bearing the economic system's stamp and ideology. In this context, postmodern culture becomes a tool for sustaining the capitalist system by promoting superficiality and diverting attention away from deeper social issues. Understanding postmodernism through, through this Marxist lens helps us see how cultural forms can perpetuate the status quo and obscure the true nature of capitalist exploitation. Jameson also writes, Postmodernism is what you have when the modernization process is complete and nature is gone for good. This quote underscores the idea that postmodernism is deeply intertwined with the advanced stage of capitalism, where everything, including nature, has been commodified and transformed by market forces. Jameson argues that postmodern culture is a direct reflection of the economic conditions of late capitalism. Late stage capitalism is characterized by the dominance of multinational corporations, global markets, and the commodification of all aspects of life. This stage of capitalism is marked by a shift from production to consumption and an emphasis on the spectacle and image. The focus is now on creating desires and needs through advertising and media, turning consumption itself into um, a form of identity and social status. This shift underscores how our reality is increasingly mediated by images and experiences designed to perpetuate consumer culture. He states, the new spatial logic of the simulacrum is now dominated by categories of mass culture, an explosion of numerous sign systems. In this context, cultural production becomes indistinguishable from economic production, and culture itself is commodified. Art, literature, and media no longer, yawn, no longer serve as a means of critical reflection, but are um, ideological imprints produced to be consumed as commodities, reinforcing the logic of the market. One of the key features of postmodern culture, according to Jameson, is pastiche. Unlike parody, which imitates a style to critique it, pastiche is a form of imitation without any satirical intent or critical edge. It is a blank parody that celebrates the surface level of cultural forms without engaging with their underlying meanings. He explains, pastiche is, like parody, the imitation of a peculiar mask, speech in a dead language, but it is a neutral practice of such mimicry. Without parody's ulterior motive, without the satirical impulse, without laughter. This focus on surface aesthetics leads to what Jameson calls deathlessness. 
In postmodern culture, there is no longer a distinction between surface and depth, appearance and reality. Everything is reduced to a series of images and spectacles, devoid of any deeper meaning or substance. In this landscape, the distinction between reality and representation blurs as life becomes a continuous performance aimed at generating consumption. Authentic experiences and genuine social interactions are replaced by curated moments designed for public display, such as social media posts that emphasize appearance over substance. This superficiality serves to distract and pacify individuals, making it ever more difficult to engage critically with the underlying socio-economic structures and injustices that perpetuate inequality and exploitation. Another important aspect of Jameson's analysis is the crisis of historicity in postmodern culture. He argues that postmodernism is characterized by a pervasive sense of nostalgia, a longing for a past that is idealized and romanticized. This nostalgia reflects a deeper crisis of historical consciousness, where the present is experienced as a series of disjointed moments without any coherent narrative or connection to the past. Jameson writes, the past as referent finds itself gradually bracketed and then effaced altogether, leaving us with nothing but texts. This loss of historical perspective undermines the ability to think critically about the present and envision alternative futures. It serves the interests of late capitalism by promoting a sense of inevitability and permanence, making it difficult to imagine any form of systemic change. Jameson also discusses the commodification of culture under late capitalism. Cultural products are created and consumed as commodities, stripped of their original meanings and contexts. This commodification leads to a flattening of cultural differences and the homogenization of global culture. Effectively, culture becomes the same globally. He states, the postmodernist sensibility is characterized by a new kind of superficiality in the most literal sense, a new depthlessness, which finds its prolongation both in contemporary theory and in a whole new culture of the image or the simulacrum. This homogenization serves the interests of multinational corporations by creating a global market for cultural commodities, reinforcing the dominance of capitalist ideology. Jameson's analysis reveals the ideological implications of postmodern culture. By celebrating surface aesthetics and promoting a sense of depthlessness, postmodernism obscures the underlying economic and social structures of late capitalism. It diverts attention from the real conditions of exploitation and inequality, making it difficult to develop a critical perspective. He argues, the culture of late capitalism thus tends to displace the older, modernist, aesthetic, critical distance, replacing it with a populist and economically motivated fusion of the aesthetic and the commercial. This fusion of aesthetics and commerce serves to neutralize potential sources of dissent and resistance, integrating them into the logic of the market. Jameson's critique of postmodernism remains highly relevant today. The commodification of culture, the emphasis on image and spectacle, and the crisis of historicity are all prominent features of contemporary society. Social media, for example, exemplifies the logic of, uh, of um, or late capitalism, uh, where personal identities uh, and relationships are mediated through commodified images and performances. Understanding Jameson's analysis helps us to critically engage with the cultural forms and practices that shape our lives and to recognize the underlying economic and ideological forces at play. Postmodernism, or the cultural logic of late capitalism by Frederick Jameson, offers a profound critique of postmodern culture and its relationship to late capitalism. By examining the features of pastiche, depthlessness, and the crisis of historicity, Jameson reveals how postmodernism reflects and reinforces the conditions of late capitalism. His work challenges us to look beyond the surface of cultural forms and to develop a critical perspective on the economic and social structures that shape our reality. 
For those interested in delving deeper into related ideas, Guy Debord's The Society of the Spectacle explores the impact of spectacle on society. Jean Baudrillard's Simulacra and Simulation examines how reality is mediated by images. And Herbert Marcuse's One Dimensional Man critiques capitalism's manipulation of desires. Thank you for watching The Left Library. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe for more simplified insights into political philosophy, political economy and political science. Let's continue to learn and grow together.